Lord, I sense that in some ways you may be displeased as to how we are living and our true motives behind our actions. Please help and guide us daily in our intentions to do your will and what is pleasing in your sight. Jesus began, Most of what you do is highly pleasing to me. Since you brought it up, Elizabeth, and immediately I wanted to reel it back in, there are a few areas which could be improved. For years now, I have increased you with much, and you have faithfully given to others who have need. Very soon, dear ones, you will be entering into leaner times, and I want you to be able to give even more to others, starting now, and less to yourselves. All it will take is a sudden knockout of power for an extended duration of time, and your circumstances will dramatically change and be affected. The food storage in animals are only a small portion of my instructions. The preparation of your inner self is far greater than these and will be what ultimately carries you through difficult times ahead, along with my graces and provision. During my earthly ministry, our family was deprived of much and gave good example of living for others and not ourselves. We did not give in to our flesh by practicing self-control and denial of worldly delights. I ask that all my beautiful brides learn to live on less and give more to the poor. These intentional actions not only purifies your hearts, but gives us great joy when you provide comfort to others and help ease their burdens. What exactly do you want us to do, Lord? In everything you do, think about others, Jesus continued. When you prepare your grocery lists and ask someone to do a chore for you, be cognizant about your brother or sister who is doing the actual work. Ask yourselves, how can I simplify or make this task lighter for my brother to fulfill? Is the work, food, or cleanup something you could do yourself to lessen someone else's load? Is the food you are consuming enough to sustain you physically? And could you have a little less and give more to others who have no food or don't know where their next meal is coming from? When he said this, I thought about wood to heat our hermitage, which I usually ask brothers Leo or Stephen to get for us, and was feeling guilty about it when maybe I could cut and gather the wood myself. Jesus broke into my thoughts and said, Everyone has their assigned work to do. What you should consider is your timing and asking for something. If your brothers are busy supplying others with wood, then wait to ask at a more convenient time. I also was thinking about getting some new moisture-resistant winter boots, as everyone seemed to have a newer pair, and mine keep coming apart, even after I've glued them three times with Gorilla Glue. I would come home each day and my socks and feet would be soaked through from hiking through the snow. For the past two years, I have been wearing Mother Elisha's mother's shoes, which are faux suede and also get wet. Well, I decided to go online and purchase a pair of inexpensive snow boots when the Lord said no. I thought, come on, Lord, this is a necessity. Then I went to town last week with Brother John and saw Walmart and thought, I will just quickly run into the store and buy a cost-effective pair of boots. And again, Jesus said very clearly, No, make do with what you have, and I will give the boots you would have purchased to someone else who has greater need of them. Right then, I was so convicted and aware of my selfishness. I felt like a toad and immediately started thanking the Lord for his provision for others. Jesus continued, My precious ones, this is not a chastisement or to make you feel guilty. It is an awareness and a higher level of conscience for you all to be concerned about those around you or who you come across. We have blessed you all to be a blessing to others. And that was the end of his message. As a confirmation to his words, the gospel reading during Mass was the Beatitudes. 
and raising his eyes towards his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven.